Have you ever stopped to consider the lesser known conflicts that have left a lasting imprint on America's past? Today, we delve into one such conflict the Creek War of 1813. 1814, far from being a mere local skirmish, this war was a dramatic clash of cultures and territorial ambitions that spilled beyond its initial borders. Its true significance lies in the sweeping changes it brought to Creek society and the indelible impact it had on the territorial expansion of the United States. But before we dive into the details, let's reflect on a key question that frames our journey How did a seemingly isolated struggle within the Creek nation grow into a pivotal chapter in the story of America's early 19th century expansion? In this video, we'll explore the intricate threads of cultural tensions, territorial disputes. And the transformative power of the Creek War as it intertwined with the broader backdrop of the War of 1812. Get ready for a journey through time as we unravel the origins and evolution of a conflict that reshaped American history. But before we continue, show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Now, let's step back to the early 1800s. A period marked by immense upheaval in the southeastern United States. With the Creek Nation, known as the Muscogee, at the heart of this turbulent transformation. This powerful confederation, composed of various Native American tribes, was divided into the Upper Creeks and Lower Creeks, each with unique social and political structures. The Lower Creeks were more inclined toward European customs, while the Upper Creeks clung to their traditional ways. Within the Creek Nation, Internal tensions were not only political but also deeply social and cultural. The Creek Confederacy was a rich mosaic of groups like the h i c h i t e and the Alabama, each bringing distinct elements to the collective Creek identity. This diversity, while a source of strength, also sowed the seeds of internal discord that would eventually erupt into open conflict. As Euro American settlers increasingly encroached upon Creek lands, their influence began to reshape Creek society. The lower creeks were particularly exposed to European customs and lifestyles through trade, agriculture, and missionary efforts aimed at civilizing them. This fostered a growing cultural divide within the nation. European style agriculture and the adoption of plantation economics by some creek communities heightened tensions. Traditionalist factions resisted these changes, determined to preserve their ancestral customs, spiritual beliefs, and communal ways of life. The resulting cultural clash was anything but straightforward. Individuals and communities found themselves navigating a complex landscape, balancing traditional practices with the allure of Euro American influence. As external pressures mounted, so did internal divisions, setting the stage for a conflict that would test the resilience of the Creek people. Land disputes lay at the heart of these tensions. The fertile lands that were integral to Creek life also attracted the ambitions of settlers. Making them a central point of contention. Treaties like the Treaty of New York in 1790 had already forced the Creek Nation to cede large swaths of territory, fueling displacement and deepening resentment among traditionalist groups. Cultural clashes only exacerbated these issues. The imposition of European legal systems and the establishment of a centralized Creek National Council, viewed by some as a tool of assimilation, further intensified divisions. Religious and spiritual practices became another battleground. Missionaries sought to convert the Creek people to Christianity, deepening the rift between traditionalists and those drawn toward European influence. Amidst these challenges, charismatic leaders arose to champion Creek autonomy and cultural survival, rallying the people against forces threatening their way of life. Leaders like Alexander McGillivray and William Weatherford were central figures. Navigating the tides of cultural change and resistance. But what truly ignited this conflict? How did the Creek War of 1813 to 1814 come to be? This war wasn't an isolated event, it was the culmination of deep seated internal strife, external pressures, and cultural clashes that had been simmering within the Creek Nation. By the early 19th century, the Creek Nation stood at a crossroads, grappling with internal divisions and encroaching external forces. The Treaty of Fort Wilkinson in 1802, followed by other agreements, aimed to establish clear boundaries and maintain peace. However, these treaties often had the opposite effect, exacerbating discord within the Creek community. With each cession of land to the United States, 
Traditionalist factions watched as their ancestral lands slipped away, fueling their resentment. At the same time, the relentless encroachment of settlers intensified tensions. The influx of Euro American settlers into Creek territory didn't just threaten their way of life, it also disrupted established economic patterns. The divide between Creek traditionalists, who clung to their ancestral lands, and those who adapted to European practices became increasingly stark. The situation reached a critical point with the death of Tecumseh, a charismatic leader who had been a beacon for Native American unity against settler expansion. Though he was not Creek himself, Tecumseh's assassination in 1813 sent shockwaves through the Native American communities, further fracturing the Creek people. A series of events, each acting as a catalyst, pushed these underlying tensions to the surface. One such event was the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek in July 1813, often seen as the spark that ignited the Creek War. This chaotic and inconclusive skirmish between Creek warriors and American settlers served as a grim prelude to the larger conflict that was about to unfold. The Americans accused the Creeks of raiding their supplies, while the Creeks saw these actions as a necessary defense against encroaching settlers. A defining moment that escalated tensions into full scale war occurred on August 30, 1813, with the Fort Mims Massacre. A faction of Creek warriors, incensed by the increasing encroachment and inspired by the leadership of William Weatherford, launched a brutal attack on Fort Mims, a stronghold of American influence within Creek territory. This devastating event shocked the nation. Transforming the regional conflict into a widespread war and drawing additional Native American tribes into the turmoil. Initially, the Creek War was marked by localized skirmishes, with various factions within the Creek Nation jockeying for control and influence. It wasn't a single, unified rebellion, rather, it was a series of fragmented actions by different Creek communities, each reacting to unique grievances. Charismatic leaders like William Weatherford, Peter McQueen, And Manawa were instrumental in rallying Creek warriors, each aiming to unite disparate groups under the banner of Creek autonomy and resistance against perceived injustices. This localized nature of the hostilities meant that battles were often small in scale, frequently involving skirmishes and ambushes. These guerrilla style tactics, with surprise raids and ambushes, typified much of the early Creek War. However, as the conflict continued, External forces began to reshape its course. The War of 1812 between the United States and Britain offered the Creek Nation an unexpected opportunity to resist further American encroachment. The British, eager to enlist Native American allies, provided arms and support to Creek warriors, pulling the Creek War into the broader international struggle. As the Creek War expanded, it became more than just a local dispute, it grew intertwined with the larger narrative of the War of. 1812, symbolizing the complex and often tragic intersections between Native American resistance and global geopolitics. The Creek War, initially a series of small clashes within the Creek Nation, soon expanded into a significant theater within the larger war between the United States and Britain. Key battles like the skirmish at Burnt Corn Creek and the infamous Fort Mims Massacre exemplified this shift. British support for the Creeks was instrumental in shaping the course of the conflict, and the Creek War became inextricably tied to the War of 1812. As the United States and Britain vied for dominance, the Creek War presented an opportunity for both nations to gain Native American allies. The U.S. sought to secure its southern frontier, while the British aimed to divert American resources away from the northern front of the War of 1812. The Creek War's entanglement in the larger conflict was underscored by the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek in July 1813. Though inconclusive, it served as a catalyst, pushing the Creek Nation closer to an alliance with the British. Encouraged by the promise of British support, Creek warriors intensified their resistance against American encroachment. Although the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek did not deliver a decisive outcome, it heightened tensions and paved the way for larger confrontations. In response to the perceived Creek aggression, American forces sought retribution, further fueling hostilities. The Fort Mims Massacre, following Burnt Corn Creek, marked a dramatic turning point. On August 30, 1813, Creek warriors under the leadership of William Weatherford and other prominent figures attacked Fort Mims. 
a symbol of American presence in Creek lands. The assault resulted in devastating loss of life and shocked the nation, galvanizing American resolve to suppress Creek resistance. This massacre drew the United States deeper into the conflict, transforming the Creek War into a broader, bloodier struggle within the context of the War of 1812. The influence of external forces in the Creek War is a fascinating aspect worth exploring. British involvement played a pivotal role, shaping the conflict's trajectory. Seeking to weaken the United States on multiple fronts, the British supplied the Creek warriors with weapons and ammunition, bolstering their resistance and intensifying the scale of the conflict. Operating from their base in Spanish Florida, British forces coordinated with Creek leaders, promising to support Native American autonomy and resist American expansion. This alignment not only fueled the flames of the Creek War but also unified the Creek Nation, which had been divided by internal disputes. Against a common adversary, key British figures such as Admiral Alexander Cochrane and Agent Edward Nichols were instrumental in this effort. Cochrane, commanding British forces in North America, aimed to exploit the Creek conflict to divert American resources from the northern front of the War of 1812. Meanwhile, Nichols, stationed in Pensacola, worked tirelessly to enlist Creek support against the United States. As the war unfolded, several key battles and turning points emerged. The first was the Battle of Talashichi on November 3, 1813. Under General Andrew Jackson's leadership, American forces attacked a Creek village, achieving a decisive victory. This battle not only showcased Jackson's aggressive tactics but also set the stage for further confrontations in the war. Following this, the Battle of Talladega became another critical engagement. Jackson, leading American forces once again, faced fierce Creek resistance. Despite initial challenges, the Americans emerged victorious, further cementing Jackson's reputation and shifting the balance of power in the conflict. The Battle of Horseshoe Bend, however, stands as the defining moment of the Creek War. On March 27, 1814, near a tight bend in the Tallapoosa River, Creek warriors, including the formidable Red Sticks, stood their ground in a well-fortified position. Jackson, demonstrating strategic insight, devised a plan to encircle the creeks, deploying forces on both sides of the river and trapping the warriors within the bend. The battle was intense, with brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat marking the fight's climax. Ultimately, the Americans achieved a decisive victory, inflicting over 800 casualties on the creek side. This crushing defeat shattered the Red Stick faction's military strength, ending their resistance and marking a turning point in the Creek War. Following the battle, the Treaty of Fort Jackson forced the Creek Nation to cede vast tracts of their ancestral lands to the United States. The destruction of the Red Stick faction effectively ended Creek resistance to American expansion, forever altering the landscape of the southeastern United States. With the defeat of the Creek warriors, the internal divisions within the Creek nation became increasingly apparent, paving the way for negotiations that heavily favored the United States. 2. Treaty of Fort Jackson Following the decisive victory at Horseshoe Bend, General Andrew Jackson imposed the Treaty of Fort Jackson on the Creek nation. This treaty required the Creek to cede a vast portion of their territory to the United States. The loss of land and autonomy was devastating, reshaping the southeastern landscape and marking a pivotal moment in Creek history. 3. Cultural Transformation The Creek War brought about more than just territorial losses. It also set in motion a profound cultural transformation within the Creek Nation. Traditionalist factions were marginalized, while those who had aligned with European customs found themselves in positions of greater influence. The once powerful Creek Confederation saw its unity shattered with long-lasting repercussions for its cultural identity and sovereignty. The aftermath of the Creek War in 1814 ushered in profound and enduring changes, not only for Creek society but also for the broader scope of U.S. expansion in the Southeast. The Treaty of Fort Jackson, a grim monument to these changes, reshaped the territorial boundaries and destinies of the Creek people. Examining the aftermath of the Creek War reveals a complex narrative of loss, displacement, and lasting impact. The toll on Creek society was immense, dividing communities and forever altering the cultural and political landscape. 
Although the Treaty of Fort Jackson ended active hostilities, it signaled the beginning of a challenging new era for the Creek Nation. Traditionalist factions, who resisted assimilation and fought to protect their ancestral lands, faced devastating consequences. The treaty forced the Creek Nation to cede over 23 million acres of territory to the United States, leading to widespread displacement. The Red Sticks, once symbols of fierce resistance, found themselves marginalized, their autonomy eroded. The divisions and disunity that arose during the Creek War continued to shape Creek society for generations. The Treaty of Fort Jackson, signed on August 9, 1814, stands as a key document that reshaped the future of the Creek Nation. Orchestrated by General Andrew Jackson, the treaty imposed harsh terms on the defeated Creeks who were compelled to surrender vast tracts of land in what is now Alabama and Georgia. This dramatic reshaping of geographic and political boundaries permanently altered the region and signified a turning point in the history of both the Creek Nation and the United States. The Treaty of Fort Jackson forced the Creeks to surrender their lands to white settlers, setting the stage for a wave of U.S. expansion into the fertile Creek territories. This forced session not only dispossessed the Creek people but also accelerated the westward expansion that defined U.S. ambitions in the 19th century. The Creek Nation, once united, was now split into separate reservations for the Upper and Lower Creeks, further fracturing their unity and autonomy. The treaty also laid the groundwork for the harsh removal policies that would soon uproot Native American communities across the Southeast. The Creek War's legacy extended far beyond its immediate aftermath, leaving a lasting mark on the region. The forced removal of the Creek Nation from their ancestral lands was part of a broader pattern of Native American displacement in the 1830s. Culminating in the tragic Trail of Tears, this displacement was a part of a larger systematic dismantling of indigenous societies, deeply affecting the demographic and cultural landscape of the Southeast. As you, S. Settlers moved into former creek lands, rapid settlement and economic development ensued. Cotton plantations, reliant on enslaved labor, quickly took root in these fertile territories. The resulting agricultural boom, driven by cotton, shaped the socioeconomic structure of the region but also perpetuated a legacy of exploitation and racial inequality. The Creek War and its aftermath reflect a broader narrative of Native American dispossession, broken treaties and the relentless push for westward expansion. The echoes of this conflict reverberated through subsequent confrontations with indigenous peoples, underscoring the complex and often tragic history of U.S. expansion. The Creek War's influence on the southeastern United States is profound. The Treaty of Fort Jackson, which stripped the Creek Nation of over 23 million acres, disrupted established communities and signaled a severe decline in Native American sovereignty. The internal divisions that emerged during the war left enduring scars on Creek unity and culture. Moreover, the territorial changes spurred by the Creek War played a key role in the broader American expansion into states like Alabama and Mississippi. This westward movement, fueled by the quest for agricultural land and economic opportunity, extended the conflict's impact well beyond its immediate consequences. The Creek War of 1813 to 1814 thus, had a lasting impact on the region, marking a critical chapter in the larger story of U.S. territorial growth and its complex relationship with Native American communities. The harsh terms of the Treaty of Fort Jackson set a troubling precedent for future U.S. dealings with Native American nations, often marked by coercion and one-sided negotiations. This pattern of dispossession and forced removal would repeat throughout subsequent conflicts particularly during the Indian removal era of the 1830s, which saw the forced displacement of tribes such as the Cherokee, Choctaw, and Seminole. The Creek War serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of westward expansion, highlighting the clash of cultures, the struggle for autonomy, and the enduring consequences of territorial disputes. Reflecting on the Creek War's legacy provides valuable insight into the challenges and conflicts that shaped the nation's westward march. As we conclude our exploration of the genesis and transformation of the Creek War from 1813 to 1814, it's essential to acknowledge the profound impact of this often overlooked chapter in American history. More than just a localized conflict, 
The Creek War acted as a crucible that forged the destiny of the southeastern United States in the early 19th century. In the aftermath, marked by the signing of the Treaty of Fort Jackson, Creek society and the territorial landscape were irrevocably altered. The forced cession of Creek lands became a turning point, leaving a lasting imprint on the history of the region. Moreover, the Creek War's connection to the broader War of 1812 underscores its importance within the larger tapestry of American conflicts. Its significance lies not only in the military engagements but also in the cultural clashes and territorial realignments that defined this tumultuous period. As we look back, it's crucial to recognize the resilience of the Creek people and the complexities of their struggle. The Creek War stands as a poignant reminder of the intricate relationships between indigenous nations, Euro-American settlers, and the geopolitical forces that shaped early 19th century America. And with that, we conclude today's edition of the Native Journal. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you enjoyed this exploration, please like the video and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next video. See you next time.